Hey buddies, some nuts guy here. Hope you're all having a good day. I just wanted to say a really quick thanks to the devs for as far as the eye. They've been super super cool and giving me early access to the game. I've been playing it a lot for the two days leading up to the release date, 10th of September. And if you happen to be watching this when it's published on the release date, I may actually be streaming it right now. They've also been really cool in giving me a couple of game keys to do some giveaways for you guys. So if you're interested in getting a free copy and it is still the 10th of September, maybe drop by. The link will be in the description below. But as I said, I've been playing about 10 to 15 hours over the last couple of days. And these are my top tips and tricks to maybe help you not make the same mistakes that I made in my first few hours of playing the game. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Let's go. Tip number one, know and understand the terminology for the game. The Psy is essentially you, your character, or your being. The pupils are the individual units that you will control that will perform tasks for you throughout the game. A silhouette is the individual forms that a pupil can take when they're performing different jobs. A vagary is a sudden and unfortunate event that will have some kind of effect on the game and a halt are the individual locations on the map, such as this one that we're in now, or such as the individual locations that you progress through on your way to the eye. And the eye is the final destination, the location of which you're trying to get to. It's the ultimate goal of the game, to get as far as the eye. Tip number two, put a big emphasis on food. Pupils will consume six food per day unless they have a trait that states otherwise. We'll get to traits a little bit later. And pupils will consume food first starting with rations, which can be created out of a cookhouse or a bakery from raw materials like fish, game, spices, and cereals. And then they'll revert to pepkins if there are no rations left available. There were a couple occasions where I didn't keep my eye on my food, and uh, I noticed a little too late that my food stocks were running low and I didn't leave myself enough time to, uh, to gather some food and recuperate that situation. So unfortunately, a couple of times I let my pupils die because of lack of food management. So I'd definitely recommend keeping roughly 10 to 20 days worth of stocks left um, just, to, just to give you a little bit of a buffer to make sure you have enough food. Tip number three, permanent buildings versus mobile buildings. When you're building most of the things in as far as the eye, you have two choices to either choose to build a permanent version or a mobile version of that building. Permanent versions are much cheaper, usually only requiring wood. However, some of them do require a little bit of stone or ore as well and are completely permanent to this halt. They will not travel with you when you move from one halt to the next. So any upgrades that you do to these buildings will also be left behind. Mobile buildings are generally more expensive, requiring higher tier resources, stone, wool, ore, and more of them than any of the permanent buildings. However, these buildings will be taken with you when you move to the next halt. Therefore, any upgrades that you perform on these buildings will also be brought with you as well. Just bear in mind that uh, mobile buildings do take up some space in your inventory when moving from one halt to the next. So one, make sure you can fit them in, and two, don't forget to bring them with you. Tip number four. When looking to move a pupil from one job to another, or from a job to building, you want to check how many turns until they return the resources that they currently have. If you can see that they have one turn remaining until they've brought back the resources, or they are on returning resources, it's probably a good idea to let them return those resources so you can get those before changing their job. However, if you see that they are currently going to work, or if they have two more turns remaining on gathering, then you can probably change them straight away. Tip number five, pick up all of the Rhinoph loads. Rhinoph loads are a resource that you'll find maybe one or two of in each halt, and they're incredibly useful. I've picked up two on this halt already, one of which I've used to build a camp, which is an appendix, and the other of which I'm holding because rhinophilos that haven't been used to build appendixes will provide additional storage when you're looking to travel from one halt to the next. Now there's a number of appendixes you can build, 
with your rhinophilos, the camps, the workshops, the markets, and the councils, all very important and unique buildings. And in terms of when you're looking to travel from one, one halt to the next, you can see that you gain additional storage space for each rhinophilo that you have in your, in your repertoire, if you will, that hasn't been used to build an appendix yet. Very useful resources, you want to pick them all up. Tip number six. You can click on a resource icon in the top left corner to indicate anywhere on the map where that resource might be. Sometimes you have a large map and there's only one or two squares of a particular resource and it's hard to find. Or sometimes, like with the herbs here, you have multiple resources on one tile. And sometimes things like the trees will block the other resources beneath, making it difficult to see. So if you just click the icons up here in the top left corner, it will indicate where all of the resources are on the map of that specific resource. Tip number seven. Pupils have traits. They usually have one positive trait and one negative trait. You want to pay attention to these traits and assign jobs and roles based on these traits. So as an example, one of my favorite traits is Agile. It means that this pupil takes one less turn to harvest. So you generally want these for your important roles like harvesting food, harvesting wood, etc. Now, unfortunately, I didn't pay attention to this character, and this is a bad combination because this character, this pupil also has the trait Clumsy. This pupil loses five health per harvest cycle. So it has reduced time to harvest, but it also receives damage every single harvest. So that's a bad combination. Now, with Agile, you usually want them to be harvesting high value resources. But because of the fact that he's clumsy, you probably want this one to be more of a builder or a cook because building and cooking and other various jobs don't require or don't uh, mean that losing health because they're not doing harvest cycles, if that makes sense. There's a bunch of different traits. So when you look at your pupils, when you start a game, have a check what traits your pupils have and try and plan their jobs and roles according to what traits they have. Tip number eight. Paths with pupil level requirements are usually cheaper than paths that require only resources. So there are a number of paths that you can take from one halt to another on your journey towards the eye. And those paths will require different resources. Now, paths that have a pupil level requirement will often require less resources than ones that just require resources overall. So as an example, I have a path here which takes 375 meat or 75 iron. And I have a path here which only requires me to have a pupil at builder level 3. Now builder level 3 is quite easy to achieve on the first halt. You just use the same pupil to build all of the buildings for that halt and you're probably going to achieve that. So it's essentially a free path that you can take. Worth considering when you're looking at your routes towards the eye. Tip number 9. When upgrading your pupils to specialized tiers and you have a choice between two different traits or two different perks that you can gain, I would prioritize the upgrades that allow you to gain knowledge per harvest cycle quite early on because that will allow you to accrue knowledge from, uh, from the get-go. And you can do some pretty fantastic upgrades with knowledge, which will give you a number of benefits, including increased storage sizes when you're moving from one halt to the next, or various other passive benefits that you can gain from your caravan. Tip number 10. Take your time. There's no rush. You have plenty of turns from one halt to the next, and you want to make sure you're setting yourself up in the next halt as strong as possible by bringing as many resources as possible. Now I'm in a fairly strong position here. Remember a big emphasis on food. So I've got a lot of food to bring to the next zone, but I've got a couple of stacks here which aren't full and I've got a few empty spaces that I might be able to fill. So I've got plenty of turns left. We've got 85 turns until the wave catches up to us, 85 turns for us to prepare for the next halt. So it might be better for me to take a few extra turns, gather the resources that are going to set me up best for when I get to the next halt. 